come, my friend. I don't bite, but you might. My name is Zeke Matthew. VR, or virtual reality, and some of the dangers that come along with it. But first, let's discuss what VR is. A definition of VR is an artificial environment which is experienced through sensory stimuli such as sights and sounds provided by a computer and in which one's actions particularly determine what happens in the environment. So, in other words, it's a fake world that you can be immersed in. Another way to look at it is what if you could finally be in the middle of a movie or inside the video game world all around you by simply wearing a simple headset. Another way to look at it is if you're wearing a VR headset right now, which is our reality. But when you take off your headset, you return back to real reality. So the simulation theory would be the same principle. It's like us taking off our VR headset. But what is reality? A thing that exists in fact having previously only existed in one's mind. So looking at this definition, our reality is what we perceive it to be. Now, I know what you are asking. What does this have to do with VR or virtual reality? I think we have to be careful because what if we become so immersed that we could not tell the difference between VR and reality? What I mean by this is what if you could no longer take off your VR headset? You have been implanted into this fake world. And now your mind thinks this fake world is the real world. And that reality is just a dream. This is I'm behind you. I'm to your right. I'm to your left, and now I'm in front of you. I'm all around you. You hear my voice, but you cannot see me, because now you are trapped with me. Now stay a while, and let's have some fun, since you are glued there. And there's no way you can escape now. It's time to wake up. My dear friend, you fell asleep in VR. Let me continue with our discussion. Another cool thing about VR is you can create anything out of nothing. Hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. In other words, we can create objects, people, places, etc. through our imagination. Sort of like we are recreating a new heaven on earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What does this verse have to do with virtual reality? Simply, virtual reality is like us creating a new body and heaven on earth so we don't deal with the real reality. This is almost exactly like the creation story in the book of Genesis. This is rather fascinating.
fascinating if you look at it this way. Now, I know some of you are saying that's not true. But look at the parallels between them. God created everything in nature. And his greatest creation is human beings. VR is in the same way us creating an artificial heaven that has perfect being. Notice when you come out of VR that you're back in reality and want to be back in VR. It's because we long for something. And your first letter is N. I'm sure you have heard of AI or artificial intelligence. Here's what's interesting. Did you know that algorithms like here on YouTube and your smart TV and your smartphone and Alessa and Echo are all forms of AI studying you on what you watch and making recommendations to similar things to watch? Freaky, right? This is even true in Netflix and other streaming services. And a quote from a famous scientist said, With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon Elon Musk. I chose this specific quote on purpose because I have a theory. Of, but I think the Bible speaks of some type of artificial intelligence. And why do I believe this, you may ask? This is because after reading the book of Revelation, I kept wondering how could a man be deceived even by the elect? And what does it mean when he makes an image of himself, sort of like the Antichrist? Let's look at a Bible verse. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 says, I saw a beast with ten horns and seven heads rising out of the blackness of the sea. On its horns hung ten crowns and on its head were inscribed blasphemous names. This caught me off guard till a while ago, but I want to show you something. Look at the terms we use for our PC or computer. We are searching the web. We are surfing the web. The internet is a sea of information. Let's dive a little deeper here. As you see, the beast comes out of the sea, and artificial intelligence comes out of the sea of information. Freaky stuff, right? And this goes with the quote Elon Musk made when he said, Summoning a demon. Chew on that for a while. There are some scientists saying we will achieve singularity in our lifetime in which we will no longer be in control. Let's put it another way. Have you ever played the game Kingdom Hearts? If so, you will know there are heartless, which are beings without a heart, but have some type of emotion attached to it. Now, think of artificial intelligence the same way, in which it would be a heartless without emotion on its actions. You could say we are creating a real life heartless, and your second letter is S. Let's discuss robots and why they are so freaky. You see, artificial intelligence is the brain for the robot, but not the robot itself. There is a key difference between the two. Just like our brain would be the one in control of our actions, same can be said for the robot. Now, robots are interesting, and to simply put it, robots are ourselves reflected. In other words, we don't know what we truly look like, but a mirror gives us the impression or idea of what we truly look like. You may be saying, 
how could robots be a reflection of us? Well, simply because robots are built on human design. Now, what's freaky is some robots can interact with you and remember everything you do. Some don't even need human input. This means they can operate off what they were designed for. And I have come across something even more freaky. As I've said in videos before, I'm an anime fan, which is true. But if you combine robots with anime and add artificial intelligence in human forms, then you might notice a freaky combination. Now, let's look at some verses. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 says, One of the beasts heads appeared to have suffered a fatal blow, but its mortal wound had somehow been healed. Amazed at the miracle and its power, all the earth followed the beast. Revelation chapter 13 verse 12 through 16 says, The earth beast exercises all of the authority given to it by the first beast, and it forces the earth and all its inhabitants to bow down and worship the first beast, whose mortal wound had been healed. And the earth beast performs fantastic miracles. Like Elijah on Mount Carmel, it even causes fire to blaze down from heaven to earth for all to see, since it is allowed to perform these miracles in the presence of the first beast. The earth beast deceives the inhabitants of the earth, commanding them to make an image of the first beast that had survived the mortal wound inflicted by the sword. And the earth beast was granted permission to breathe into the image and to animate it so that it could even speak. It decreed that those who refused to worship the image of the first beast must be killed. And the earth beast mandates that all humans must carry a mark on their right hands or foreheads, both great and small, both rich and poor, both free and slave. What I want you to see is this beast made an image of itself. And so when we look at this, we think a human being is going to rise to power and rule everything and make an image of himself. But that's not what I see. I think robots are an image of ourselves. In other words, for the beast to be able to deceive the elect, it would have to be more than human beings. And notice how it says breathes into the image as to give it light similar to how God gave life to human with his breath. Freaky, right? But let's take it another step further. What are top scientists saying about robots? Robots will be humans' last creation, just as God created man and it was his last creation. Now, let's look at some verses. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, says, now let us conceive a new creation, humanity made in our image, fashioned according to our likeness, and let us grant them authority over all the earth, the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, the domesticated animals, and the small creeping creatures on the earth. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, One day the Eternal scooped dirt out of the ground, sculpted it into the shape we call human, breathed the breath that gives life into the nostrils of the human, and the human became a living soul. Notice an eerie resemblance between the book of Revelation and Genesis, robots are freaky, are they not? And your last letter is I. 
Now, let's spell this word out. Letter S. That is the first letter in this word. The second letter of I. That is the second letter in this word. And the final letter, which is N. And what do these letters spell out? Sin. So, what are you afraid of in sin? But first, we must define what sin is. A definition of sin is a deliberate disobedience to the known will of God. Or, in this clip from the hallway, Sin is like breaking a law that you made a commitment to. So, based on this definition, we get that sin is sort of disobedience or condition that we have to our God. This condition can be shown in the choices we make. And a good example is, are you going to obey your mother or father? Or would you rather ignore them and do your own thing? So, if you do your own thing, the sin or lie takes root and is fertilized. And the more you keep being disobedient, the more it increases. And it becomes a tree, and you become trapped in that tree. Another way to look at sin is missing the mark. And have you noticed that in robots, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, everything seems to be off, like it's missing the mark to create a new reality. Missing the mark means that something can feel off orbit or different than what we're used to, such as a human robot feels off because of its unrealistic movement, or virtual reality feels like it's off or missing something that cannot be replicated. That's what it means to miss the mark. So, what can we do about sin if it's in our nature or instinct that makes us sin? There is someone who came to fill that missing piece. They killed him, they bruised him, and he took the burden of the sin we were trapped in. And he is the missing peace. His name is Jesus, and he took on all the world's sin with every beat, every bruise, every cut, every emotion for each one of us to give us hope of a new home and to bring us back to reality so we no longer miss the mark. Now, let's look at some scriptures. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 says, It was through his sacrificial death that our sins were atoned. But he did not stop there. He died for the sins of the whole world. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Verses 18 through 19 says, The anointed one suffered for sin once for all time. The righteous suffering for the unrighteous so that he might bring us to God. Though he died in the flesh, he was made alive again through the Spirit. And in the Spirit he went and preached to those spirits held captive. Who were you listening to? And has this story been told before?